Hey guys, welcome back. We are looking at probably the most widely manufactured and uh, widely used IC in the world. And that's this little eight pin guy right here, the 555 timer chip. Now the timer chip has more uses than you could possibly under, uh, uh, guess. I mean, it, it's used in timers, pulse generators, oscillators, we're going to use it as basically a square wave generator today to show you a little bit of its functionality and this will be used in what's called the monostable mode it has two modes monostable and a stable so if we're looking at the chip <clears throat> there's our little index notch up here pin one is the ground pin and you can see we're feeding that directly to ground pin two is our trigger and our trigger is coming over here, going to this little uh, thousand nano ceramic capacitor and then draining it to the ground. Pin three is our output pin. Now, I forgot to plug that guy in. Plug it in up here. Pin three, one. Oh yeah, goes right here. Duh. Okay. Pin three is our output pin, and that's going over to our Uno. Pin four is our reset pin, and that is going to plus five volts. Pin five is your control voltage, and that's coming over here to another thousand nano capacitor which is draining into ground pin six is our threshold and if you'll notice our output from pin two our trigger is feeding over into pin six our threshold and then our threshold is also coming over here to this pot so that we can adjust the timing pin seven is the discharge and we're discharging it into a 10k resistor which is going directly to plus 5 volts and pin 8 is our VCC which goes directly to 5 volts now for our UNO hookup we've got ground going to our ground rail plus 5 volts going to our plus 5 volts and our pin three output from the 555 is feeding into digital pin seven, but then you could make it any pin you want. Now what we're gonna do first is we are going to write a little bit of code that will allow us to look at the pulses and measure the pulse width on screen. And then we'll come back here and actually look at the square waves on an oscilloscope. So let's get on to step two. All right, here is our simple little bit of code that we're using. Not much to it. That's just a comment for the name of the program. So step one, we're again going to use the define command. Save a little bit of memory. Define pin as seven. So we're telling the Arduino what pin the pulse will be on. Then we are going to create a variable called pulse length of the type float. And you can check your Arduino um, reference material to figure out the different types of variables. Uh, this one uses floating point mathematics. It's uh, a more accurate form. Then down here in setup, pin mode, pin input. So we're telling the pin mode command to use pin, which we defined up here as seven, to be an input. Then we start our serial comms. Now we begin the main part of our program. <laughs> the main part of our program consists of three things. Pretty darn simple. Pulse length equals pulse in pin I. So what we're doing is we're looking for the pulse using the pulse in command a high pulse 
on pin, which again is 7. You could also look for a low pulse, but we're looking for a high, a digital high. Then we're just going to print that information to the screen and wait one second. And when all that is said and done, we should be able to open up our serial monitor. And there we see we have 408 microseconds or 41 milliseconds. And we can adjust the pot. So we have a range of 0.41 milliseconds to 2.66 milliseconds. Now if we could change, if we change the, uh, the resistor value or the pot value, we can change uh, the timing of the square wave generator. Pretty simple. Let's go take a look at it on the oscilloscope. All right, we're back over at the lab table now. And I've unhooked our output pin three from the Arduino and hooked it up to our input for the scope. Our scope ground is attached to our common ground. Our scope is set for DC coupling, one volt, probe set at X1 value. And if you look here, you can get um, a pretty good idea of the pulse we were talking about. Let me um, now if I adjust the potentiometer over here you can see the pulses get wider and wider and then they get closer and closer together as we are adjusting that um, that threshold on the NE555. So this is just one of the possible uses of the 555. Um, you could also use it to create a blinker, uh, a timer. And we're going to look at that in our, our 555 part two. This was just a basic introduction. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Christmas?